Hey guys, it's Vandales, I'm going to Vanguard deck profile, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't like, comment, subscribe, and sorry. This time we're covering our first deck from DZ Set 4, Stoicaea Levity Dross. So we have our first Destined one here, and why not start it off with the Power of Infinity. I gotta admit, I expected Levity Dross to be a stall deck, and it can be one, but honestly, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. So let's go ahead and start, shall we, and see what we got, because honestly, this deck is very fun to play, and I'm glad this is our first deck profile we get to cover. And hopefully I don't pass out today, because typically I forget to breathe when I'm doing these deck profiles, and it's really hot in here, and I just turned off all of my AC and closed my windows, because we were right next to the next house, and I don't want to be loud. So if I pass out during this video, eh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Anyways, uh, energy generator, so this is our standard ride deck crest. You may have a ride deck crest in your ride deck. Auto ride deck, when you ride, put this card into your crest zone, if you want second energy charge three, then continues may have to 10 energies, auto became your ride phase, energy charge 3, then active with bonus per turn, energy blast 7, draw card. All around pretty solid, you get a free 3 energy every turn. This deck does actually use up a decent amount of energy, at least in the early game, so being able to catch up with that is nice. Not to mention the fact that energy blast 7 to draw card, you will never use that in this deck unless you are freaking hard, but... Being able to draw if needed is nice, and again, getting a free 3 energy every turn is great, and you definitely want to go second with this deck, considering, technically speaking, you can kill someone on first grade 3 turn with this. So, uh, this is our ride deck, Crest. And we have our starter in Stagnant per Dragon, Grade Zone, Boost, 5 cash Shield, Skate Base, Auto Roll, Pimpers, Draw Card, Standard Star, and it's just a free draw if you go second. You can make this any starter you want, but if you want to use the Grade 1 of the Ride Line skill, you're going to have to make this your starter because that Grade 1 requires this, so take that as you will. Then move on to our Trigger, switch over on our Over Trigger of Source, Dragon, DD, of Blessings, Bust, Favor, Grade Zone, Boost, 50 cash Shield, 5 cash Power, Over Trigger, Move Over Trigger, and Deck, Move it as a Trigger, Move that card, Draw a Card, Choose one Mutes, it gets Plus Move for the turn, and if you have it during your Check, Activate its Adjust Effect, which you get to draw a card. Choose one of you, it gets a crit for the turn. All your formal gets plus 10,000 power. And if your damage is on the same number of cards, your opponents or more, you get to heal a card. All around pretty solid. This is pretty much my favorite over trigger because, you know, regardless, you're getting a free 1 million in a draw. That's how all over triggers work. But this one specifically, if you drive check this, you get two free draws. Someone's getting a crit. Probably the Vanguard or thing you're giving the 1 million to. Your entire front row is getting 10k. So if your opponent won the pass, you automatically you don't even have to give the million to the Vanguard. You just give it the 10k. And then you possibly even get to heal on top of that. I love this before so much because it's an everything bagel. It gives you all the different effects at once, and it's not an instant win if you see it. It just makes it a hell of a lot harder for your opponent to win. So one of Bus Favor. Then we have our normal triggers, three copies of Peppery Pepper, Gerdzo Boost, 15k show, 5k power, you can mix any crit that you want, so to make a Peppery Pepper, because I've tried to get the Destined One triggers to be almost the exact same as the Faded One triggers, there's only one exception to that so far, so, uh, you know, three crits here, and then four Spiring Maiden Alana, Gerdzo Boost, 15k show, 4k power, Critical Trigger, Auto Rear Guard, and Battle Boost to shove the Soul, 2 of Music, 2k for the turn, okay, that 2k will not make the difference. This deck uses up zero soul at the entire game, so you will never need to use its effect. But if you're in the situation where that 2k might make the difference, or you just need a swinger, Alana. So she's there as a 4, so we got the 7 crits for pressure. We got the 4 draw tokens for remade and Lena, Grid Zoe, Boost, 5k show, 4k base, draw tokens, guards, or components, vanguards, are great through a greater 5,000 shield. So the 10k shield is nice to have. This deck wants to get 5 attacks as quickly as possible, and it can pull out quickly, but being able to do that requires you to have a lot of specific units. So Lena being able to draw into those is nice. So we have the four draws for that pressure. Then we have four cheery support elf grade zone boost in case show 5k power again. You can make this anyhow you want just to make a cheery support elf because it's technically Zorga's heal trigger, which doesn't make sense at all, but that's just how it is. Uh either way though, you can make it any who you want. You can even make the county heals, but I choose to have the consistent 15k shield with the fluctuating 10 to 25k shields. And also I her happiness fits the vibe that I feel when I play this deck. So take that as you will. So we have four heals, seven crits, four draws. Move on to our grade ones. We have four copies of Knight of Illusionary Silence Clarence. He was the card that made me think, oh, every single Dustin one's going to get a counter charger. And then Alden didn't get one. But also in Alden's defense, Fire Ass exists. For the record, I'm recording this the, the day before we get the Dustin one of Exceedance. So I'll, if that one gets a counter charger, then it goes to show every single Dustin one's getting a counter charger. And the only reason Alden didn't get one is because technically Alden already has one in the form of Fire Ass. Anyways, grade one boost by Kishore to get base. Alder rear guard at the end about this unit attacker boosted. If you have an infinity, he has marker on saying calm as his unit and you did not counter charge this turn shove the soul counter charge one okay cool more random soul charging in the deck that doesn't soul blast at all in order to get a cc all right i'm pretty solid this deck does use up a lot of cb and being able to counter charge it back is nice also much that it can attack or boost it can attack or boost into anything not to mention the fact that the only requirement is you have to have an infinity as marker in this column meaning god forbid but she ever gave the this deck in a way to make infinity as marcus before you get to grade three boom clarence is now usable not to mention the fact that i just really love this thing we all know I'm a fan of knights, but like 
One of my, I'm going to get so much hate for this. One of my favorite shows, or at least for a while ago, was Miraculous Ladybug. And I loved Mayura. And I really love how this kind of has, like, that similar peacock pattern on his, like, frick. It's not a vest, but, like, right here, this little poof. So, four of clearance. He's a good grade one. He gets countercharged. He gets sold. The deck ever used soul. And if, God forbid, Bushy ever made Infinity Eyes Makers while you're at grade two or grade one even, this card would be viable then, too. So, four of clearance. Then we have four copies of Full Knowledge Fox Hill, Great Own Boost, 5k Show, AK Base. If you want to get five attacks, this thing is mandatory. It continues rear guard during the battle that it boosted. If your Vanguard's a grade three guard, levy draws 5,000 power, so automatically 13k boost regardless of anything. And then auto rear guard when it boosts a grade three guard, Vanguard levy draws on the card name. If you have an Infinity as marker on your opponent's rear guard circle, so I love how it doesn't even have to be yours. It requires it to be your opponent's because you can remove the ones on your opponent's board, but also F's over Virena if they board nuke you. Add 2,000 power to the end of the battle, and then counter boss one, choose one of your back or rear guards of the turn that you can swing from back row and it gets some of the power as well so this is if it boosts the vanguard a 15k booster so your vanguard's at least a 28k on this turn you use levy draw skill 38k double critical persona ride 48k double critical but then also you make someone a back row attacker who doesn't have to be in the same column as an affinity eyes marker just saying but most of the time Clarence, because your other back row attacker will be this guy so the wrong card this guy so take that as you will though uh, fox is all around really nice grade one support card it's definitely my favorite out of all like the grade ones that like require to boost the specific grade three. It's nice to have, and I really love like the butterfly wings. How it's kind of a mix between a butterfly and I. W it's a it's a sylvan horn beast. I know which one it is, and I know what animal it is, but I cannot remember for the life of me. But it looks really cool. It looks like really majestic, and I love this grade one to death. So four of foxo, beautiful card. But you knew what they were doing, both art wise and skill wise. Hell yeah. Then we have four copies of Honeycomb Thyrus, Great on Boost, Zero Souls, K base continues set down. We have to four Sentinels and Dockers, Point Guard Circle, choose one reads, it cannot be hit on the battle. If your hand is two more cards in, choose a card from hands, guard to stand PG, nothing to specify about it. Basically, that means if this is only one of the cards and your hand plus one guard circle, you don't have to discard one, it's great. Because that means you can be as a good stuff as one the early game, and then when your opponent eventually counterattacks you, throw this down, give him the middle finger, you're safe. All right, pretty solid. This deck can be played defensively in stall. Yes, if you're me, you spam, spam, spam the hell out of everything here. And then when your opponent eventually contacts you, that's when you throw down the PG. Around that is a nice PG to have. You can make a Planet Prevent Dragon. You can make a Custodial Dragon because ultimately all of them have the same skill. I choose to make it Thyrus because A, it's the PG I won for Zorga, and B, it's the PG that came out to the release of DZ. So it's obligation to run Thyrus here. And then we have our last grade one in the deck, one of in the ride deck, none in the main deck of probably my least favorite grade one that has ever been printed for ride decks and that's simply because of the quote-unquote synergy it has with its ride line or lack thereof for a better phrase score piercer dragon such a cool looking art waste of an effect Great on boost, fat show deck at base, continuous vanguard. If your soul has stag nipper, when you ride to Manthe side from your ride deck, you may ride that discard card from your hand. Okay, I made it clear, unless it's specific cards, I tend to hate when Bushy does that because they they made it so bad because they kept giving it to every ride line. But here, the grade two doesn't even do it, which is fine. But the fact is this, the deck does not use up soul at all. They could have made this a soul blast skill. Instead of making it, you can ride without discarding from the hand. Because then certain specific grade twos would be more valuable but because this locks you into running the starter if you want to get a free ride deck this is just an fu i don't like score piercer i don't and technically speaking you don't need it for the grade two because the grade two doesn't require it but i run it because of the theme which means i'm stuck with this against my better judgment and i hate it one of score piercer in the right deck it's such a good art and it's wasted on like the most generic and worst of the ride decks goes ever listen there are so many decks i've asked for a ride deck for and i said i would accept the generic ones of this this would be the time bushy give this skill to a generic ride deck card do not give it to this then we move on to our grade twos three copies of c rumble brave shooter grade two set five kashio 10k base all don't put on guard circle from handers guard from your hammer riding from the ride deck current boss one g boss three draw card okay again we eat into the energy a little bit early thanks to mantis over here but if you end up having the eb for this this is a nice draw or worst case scenario cb one to draw card never use this to discard for ride deck always use this first but if you need to it's a possible free hand card but you mainly use it for guarding and worse comes to worse scenarios where you need hand cards to defend yourself and typically you're going to be eating out 
the EB because you don't want to eat up Soul B, CB because a lot of this deck uses CB, such as Levy Drops who can place more markers and your re-standing boy over here. So type that as you will. And the games where you don't hit Clarence because he decides to stay in the bottom 16 for some reason makes that really hard to deal with CB. And then the other skill, you will never use this event. Never in your life will you use this. But auto when put on rear guard circle, if you persona roll this turn, CB1 energy or energy blast 3. Choose a great two as Normina with a different card name for this unit and without Sentinel from your drop zone or an order card from the drop zone. Shove it to hand if you put a card you discard a card so pretty much swap a card in your hand with a card in your drop zone this will never be worth it unless you're in the situation where it is do or die you're going to lose next turn if you don't do this and this is in your drop zone and you do not have a copy of it in hand or on board for that matter then you use this otherwise this card is simply as a last minute guard fodder and nothing else you want to change this out for a soul blaster i do not blame you three copies of c brumble brave shooter i run in for those like scenarios where it could happen because to be fair i have been in a lot of scenarios at least since the start of dz or not a lot but like more frequent often where this defensive skill really does come in handy and i have yet to use the skill but you know as it happened with far heart one day it'll happen and one day it'll make the difference between me winning and losing so it gets the three up for that then we have four copies of Lum Biting Maiden Margaret. Great turns to five because she'll tank at base. I love how it's so against these like cycle grade twos. And then there are times where I would just randomly run them. And then they're just really useful in that one deck. And then I never run them again. Anyways, auto wound discard from your hand during your right phase. Soul boss won't bot deck this card. Draw a card. This would be so useful if I could, you know, use it on my grade zero ride going to grade one. But I can if I want free ride deck. And then I can't do it the next turn because I get free ride deck anyway. So I only get to pull this effect off once. But I mean, it's free draw in a deck that does use up soul. So is that. And then auto in place on rear guard circle. If persona rolled this turn, counter boss one, your opponent can't intercept for the turn, then all your punts from rear guard's gonna stand in the next stand phase. Okay, this is an FU to your opponent, and like if it's a choice between this and this for your CB, you're using this. Because this not only stops your opponent from intercepting, so you can just beat the hell out of them and they can't really stop you, or they're gonna have a harder time stopping you, but also you just shut down their front row. So if you get through enough of your opponent's hand, when they eventually choose to call over their front row units so they can attack next turn, you probably place at least one infinity eyes marker in their front row to where their front row columns are gonna be significant significantly weaker than before unless they had a big enough hand to get through that and still keep a lot of good units our on margaret is a very nice and solid grade too i do like her a lot she gets you hand cards she locks down opponents intercepts and she makes it a lot harder for your opponent to win in situations where you can't win but you can push close for game she's an easy four for me then we have four copies of Pack Claw Hunter Huli. Grade 2 in SF5 because she'll 10k base. I don't know why. I love her Fox Tails. Like, really realistic feeling. Anyways, on is placed on Rear Guard Circle. If you have Infinity Eyes Markers and Commons as a unit, CB1 choose a Great Thales card from Drop Zone called to Rear Guard Circle. And then if there are three or more Infinity Eyes Markers, she gets 10,000 power for that turn. Okay, specifically, it says if you have. It means if the markers are yours. Basically, it doesn't matter whose side of the board there are as long as they belong to you. Because in case you play the mirror match and then your opponent starts spamming down markers. So. Yeah, always kind of keep that in mind. If a card says your affinity markers, it doesn't mean the ones on your board unless specified. It just means the markers you created. So if you created three in total, uh, she'll get the plus 10k, which is nice. But mainly use her for like early game aggro, you know, make sure you can rest on your opponent. But also in the late game too, she could definitely make nice attacks because you don't want to put an affinity eyes marker on her unless you have to. You kind of want to focus on everyone else, such as Clarence getting the counter charge. So to be fair, you can just play it smart and put them as they call them as each other, etc, etc. Aron Huli's a nice grade too. Acts for rush, acts as early game game beat stick so four of then we have four copies of on fall and Togate. so great turn to 5k shield tank at base this card was a lot better than i expected it to be auto placed on rear guard circle if you have an affinity as marks and column as it energy blast three check top two choose a card from among them put one to hand put the other to top or bottom cool and plus five thousand power honestly when i saw the words look at the top two cards when i first saw this card i truly believe this card sent something to drop zone because it belongs to stoicaea nope he deck stacks for some reason which is incredible because you can stack crits and in one specific game i had the choice between a crit and a heal i forgot if i won that game or not but i know i put a crit on top and then continues rear guard during turn if you have a great three good advantage levy drops in the card name and you have three or more fitty eyes markers again doesn't have to be on your side of the board specifically just in total he gets 5,000 power and then if you do not have another copy of this in the back row he gets the ability to attack from back row so he is a 15k swinger from back and the turn he's placed is a 20k swinger not to mention the fact that he allows you to get more attacks and then combo this with fox so you got five attacks overall honestly i like on a lot he's a good grade two he stacks the deck he gets decent numbers and you know you show him on an affinity as a marker at least the turn he places the 30k swing and the turn after he's a 25k swing that's still a 25k swing that your opponent can't stop easily not to mention the fact that it's just free back row attacks you know worst case scenario if you don't have cb because you ate all of it trying to kill your opponent in one go as long as you don't call another copy of this to the back row you're good and because it just has to have another copy in the back row similar to 
opposite of your glaive, if you just put one in the front row, you can still attack with the one in the back row because they both have to be in back row for that ability not to add, go off. So for Vonfall, very solid grade two. I like it a lot. I think it's really well designed. Good. To then we have one copy of Mantis Life Dragon in our ride deck as our last grade two. Great 205 Kishio, 10k base, all doing Rotopon, but a great three card, love drops in the card name, energy blast three, checked off five, just one great those card from Mother Real, but the hand deck. Okay, here's my one thing with this. This card is so unnecessarily bad because needing to energy blast three in a not necessarily energy blast heavy deck, but like when this exists, obviously it's kind of like no. But there is one saving grace about this. This is one of the few, if not the only ride deck card in the game that can search for PGs. How often are you going to flip PGs off this? Honestly, my track record so far has legitimately been like 75, 25, like 75% of this time I will flip off a PG. So like worst case scenario, if I want a PG, like if I have every other piece in hand, I'm going to flip that PG to hand. But like this, as much as I don't like the skill, it literally is just an energy blast three. And as long as it's not a grade four, it adds anything because it doesn't specify it has to be a unit. So if you want to add Elemento Centauria, the Blitz Order PG, you can. You want to add a regular PG, you can. You want to add a trigger, you can. If you want to add like any of your pieces, you very much can. Like this card, as much as his skill is annoying, it's really good. So one of Mantis Scythe, it is just filtering out its finest for the worst cost it could be, but it is what it is, and I deal with it. So one of. Honestly, I like it skill, so I'm willing to give it the pass. Then we have four copies of our order, searching for infinite knowledge. Grade three, normal order. I really wish it was a set order. This was the this has the art of a set order. They wasted this opportunity. Play it by energy blasting two of your vanguards, levy draws. Thank God it's not energy blast three. I would flip the table if it was. Choose a card with a great lesson equal to your vanguard from the drop zone, call it to rear guard circle. And that unit gets plus thousand power for each of your infinity eyes markers and saying column is that called unit. Again, if you count your opponents once two. So if that column had let's say three infinity eyes markers on it, that called unit gets plus fifteen K. All around pretty solid. It doesn't cost CB. I really wish this cost Soul instead, even if it was Soul Blast 2, because literally the only other card in the actual Destined 1 Levy Dross deck that takes up Soul is Levy Dross himself, and it's only once per game. But it is what it is. It calls a rear guard, it gets numbers. If you don't have the ability to deck stack or all of these are in drop zone, you get a free call. After you use this, the once per game thing, because you're not going to ride to Levy Dross again, obviously, while this is on the Vanguard Circle, you're going to have energy for days. So, searching for infinite knowledge. It's a nice grade three order. I do like it a lot. It gets you rear guard, it gets you numbers. If you want to tech this down to two copies and then put in two copies of the Sweet Honey Garden, I think is what it's called, the thing that gives you plus 15k and actually Soul Blast, then you can do that as well. But I prefer searching for infinite knowledge because, uh, you know, numbers, rear guards, and a fist of theme. And then we have our last card in the deck. God, I'm forgetting to breathe again. And that is Destined One of Infinity, Levy Dross. Love the wings, and the anime made me hate this card because, not because of how it looked, I did like how it looked in the anime until it showed me the fact of this tail. I literally did not know this was its tail. And that disappointed me so much because I thought its body was a little bit thicker than what it was. So I blame the anime for me not liking this card anymore. Anyways, great three to numbers are decay base. After Vanguard Circle once per turn, Crown Boss 1, choose both one of yours and your opponent's rear guard circles each and put an Infinity Eyes marker on each of them. So pretty much you get one of these things for free. I know I keep talking about them. I probably should have showed them off earlier. They're Infinity Eyes markers. They cannot be put into the main deck. You just place them whenever. They have literally no skill. Levy Draw is the only thing that gives them an effect. Um, you... Can run 10. I mean, I just put 10 here because, like, in case by some miracle of God you found a way to just stack a bunch of markers on the board, you can't. It's not going to do anything, but, you know, it is what it is. And then Auto Vanguard, when any fighter's unit on the rear guard circle with your Infinity as marker attacks or boost, you may have that unit get 10,000 power or minus 10,000 power for the battle. Then if it's your opponent's unit that lost 10,000 power, remove your Infinity as marker from that rear guard circle and you draw a card. Okay. Downside is you can't minus your own power just to get a draw and remove the marker upside is you get to pick what gets 10k and what doesn't now obviously most of the time you're going to make your opponent lose the 10k and gain your 10k here's the thing though if you're in this situation where your card has an on attack ability that possibly can counter charge but you want to cb starve your opponent you can just minus 10k from your attacker the attack whiffs they don't get cb but oh clarence attacked Send him to Soul CC as long as there's another Infinity has mark up the same column as him. So, yeah, his skill like th there's an obvious way you're gonna use it most of the time, but like this skill can be very interesting to you. Actually, no, you only lose the marker if it's on your opponent's rear guard. So never mind, you can just make it lose 10k anyways, and it would still get the skill. So you can like 
there are certain situations where this skill becomes a lot more technical and it's just really fun like thinking about the situations where you're going to choose to minus your own power instead to give your opponent the middle finger or even give them 10k because maybe you want cb and they're expecting you to minus the 10k i don't know honestly it's pretty cool then the divine skill uh, act vanguard uh, if your va opponent's vanguards are grade three or greater soul boss one choose one of you and your opponent's rear guards put an infinite ice marker on them and get 10k in a crate so it doesn't pull that off on grade two turn because if it did god forbid that happened you be able to five attack your opponent while they're at grade two the 38k swinger and you know bully them to death with fox Hill. but all around levy draws is pretty solid his device goes to something flashy but you know 23k double crit with a booster that brings it to 38k double crit possible persona ride 48k double crit not to mention that this can be pulled off on first grade three turn if you do go second in a deck where yes this skill is very simplistic of just having b6 on your board and lowering your opponent's power but also the fact that you can get very technical and make it impossible for your opponent to cb starve you if you play it right but also just cb starve your opponent while still getting resources out of it and then consistently put markers on the board each turn honestly levy draws Dross is amazing. I really hope they do that in the anime. In like the, we all know Kuan's gonna fight again. We all like 100% agree on that. I hope Kuan does that in his next match where he legitimately does like swaps of who gets 10k and who doesn't just to like outplay whoever's opponent is most likely Akina. Either way though, three of them in the main deck, one of them in the right deck of Levy Dross. As much as I don't care for like the deck's 100% play style, that skill, even though it never is gonna come up or it's rarely gonna come up, makes this deck worth playing. And that's it for the deck. I hope you guys enjoyed. All on this deck is like. It, it's decently fun to play i'll admit this this grade two as much as i don't like his cost straight up is amazing the fact that he literally adds anything but a grade four or higher to your hand is great this thing being able to stack the deck is amazing and also that back row attack that i would never use properly huli who is just board rush and hit carnage i love margaret who like the one time i use her shuts down my opponent completely foxo who's consistent back row attacker clarence who can combo perfectly well with levy draws levy draws who has the most technical skill i've ever seen in my life and i love abusing that whenever i get the chance if i ever get the chance and the order that has literally been PG part of the entire time I played this deck. Either way, that's it for this deck. I hope you guys enjoyed. This deck is nice to play. If you want to go ahead and try it out, by all means, go ahead. It's not my favorite Destin one by a long shot. Weirdly enough, that's going to be on my next deck profile. But um, I still think Levy Dross is a good design for a Destin one. So I'll see you all in the next one. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, join us for Twitch. I'll see you all then. Don't forget to up your vanguards.